Watching Harmony and Diversity, and again I'm speaking with Anne Lastman, a post-abortion grief counsellor. There's been two programs with Anne, one tracing her spiritual background, then speaking specifically about survivors of abortion. This program would like to address the Abortion Law Reform Bill 2008. That the big issue that surrounds this is the conscientious objection of doctors, which we'll go into some detail. But to introduce, uh, these are the amendments which were proposed for that bill and which were rejected. The first one was reducing the time during which the approval of two doctors would be necessary for an abortion, reducing that from 24 to 12 or 14 weeks, rejected. Restricting abortions to public hospitals, rejected. Providing that a second doctor approval is needed for an abortion, the second doctor does not is not employed in the same medical practice or the same hospital, rejected. Partial birth abortions should be illegal. Permitting medical practitioners to refrain from participating in an abortion or having to refer a woman to another abortionist as a conscientious objectors, rejected. The fetus that is born alive should have all the rights of a child, regardless of whether the fetus was born during or after an attempted abortion, rejected. A medical practitioner who performs an abortion and who gives direction to perform an abortion must ensure that the reasonable steps have been taken to ensure that the abortion is conducted without causing pain to the fetus. Rejected. Termination review panels to be established to oversee abortions on a woman who is more than 24 weeks pregnant. Rejected. Practition, uh, sorry, protection of medical practitioners and nurses who have conscientious objection to abortion. Rejected. The two issues that we'd like to pick up from there uh, uh, relate to the nurses, the medical practitioners, this issue of conscientious objection, which is a major, major ethical consideration. I'm sorry for that long introduction, Anne, but I'll pass that over to you. Uh, how does this abortion bill uh, sit with you? What are your observations? As I was listening to you, obviously I've read them in the past, but you can't keep them on the front of your memory because they drive you insane. Mm. If, as you read them, all I could hear behind that was so much hatred mm -hmm. of those people who've passed those laws. Yes. That's all I could hear, hatred. Imagine mm. even not to permit a child that's being killed mm. to have pain killing, mm. Mm. rejected. Mm. Mm. Not to allow a person who doesn't want to be involved in an abortion, rejected. Mm. Not to, there is not one sense of pity no. in this law not for the not not for for nobody for nobody mm. imagine a child born alive mm. not to be attended to mm. rejected yes what's what kind of society have we got that would put together such a law. Hmm. It seems to be an objectivizing of the mother, the father, 
and the and the child r wrapped up in in what seems to be uh, political correctness which is and, and dare I make the point which is is actually has a the ring of feminism in there there's a a, a weaving of that it, it it is quite from an ethical point of view and I I'm just looking here that that um, uh, one of the titles of an article I looked at is Criminalising Christian Behaviour, Legally Enforced Political Correctness. Yes. Yeah. Now, that's an issue uh, which grows from the uh, lack of opportunity of a doctor to stand behind his conscientious objection to abortion. What about me? What's going to happen to a counsellor and a Catholic psychologist or Christian? or Buddhist, mm -hmm. who has an objection to abortion, and I speak out against it. Yes. What's going to happen? Mm. Am I going to be one of those that if that Tasmanian bill goes through, am I going to be one of those that goes to jail for 12 months and is fined $65,000? Yes. Am I going to be one of those? Mm. What yeah. barbaric mm. human beings Yes could put together such laws. Yes, uh, I think th there's, there's an issue to do with ethics. Uh, th there's uh, some of what we're looking at is the death of ethics. Uh, but we're also looking at political correctness because, and, and I, I'm not uh, casting any aspersions on Islam whatsoever, but legislating in any way which offends the Islamic faith is steered away from quite sharply. And I reiterate the fact that's not a judgment of anything to do with Islam. It's just the way in which governments and organisations respond. So if why? I was to say, why? Yeah. Why? Yes. Political correctness. Absolutely. Mm. And, and what we spoke in one of the other shows, mm. that, that uh, the first or second show, I don't remember, that abortion is so normal now mm. that we're even talking about post-birth abortion. <laughs> You've heard of that, haven't you? Of the post-birth abortion. No, I haven't. Ethics. But, but when, when, we, uh, when we come back after this break, yes. let's talk about post-birth abortion. Okay. We'll be back in a moment. Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking with Anne Lastman, who's a post-abortion grief counsellor. And Anne, just as we went to the break, you were talking about post-birth abortions, which seems like a very interesting concept. Could you explain that a bit? I thought that that would shock you, and you did look a bit shocked. Mm, indeed. But I think about, I think it was last year, there was these two uh, Melbourne philosophers mm. who came out with this theory that if we can now have abortions to 40 weeks, mm. why not post-birth if there is something wrong with the child? Well, there's, within a certain time frame, well, do something about it. Post-birth abortion. Abortion, what does the word abortion mean? Abortion means the death of a child. So post-birth abortion means post-birth, the mm. death, the euthanize yes. the child, because that's the only way, because it would be the euthanasia of a, of a brand new baby where, for mm. whatever the reasons. Now, I remember mm. at the time there was a huge hue and cry mm. against these two uh, so-called philosophers. <laughs> and rightly so, but mm. what what mm. we have to keep in mind yeah. is that it's already been thought about. Yes, that's the nothing happens unless it starts with a thought. That's right. Okay, so mm. if it's thought about, mm. it's somewhere in the melting pot. Yes, yes. So why are we why are we surprised with gender selection? That's part of this post birth abortion. Yes, that's preceding it. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's basically uh, ethical degeneration, um, and philosophers uh, 
are, are renowned for, for, for throwing a stone in the pond. Those two guys might not necessarily have believed it at all, but they could see, well, they could see the extension, the logical extension of what was happening. And, and, and unfortunately, it, it, it's, it has that potential. Just talking about ethics, um, you'd be uh, familiar with the fact that, uh, I think it's in Wales, particularly where there were coal mines, the, the miners would go down the mine shaft with a canary in a cage. And so if the canary started to get sick or die, they knew that carbon monoxide was around. Yeah. So the air was going bad. Uh, there's an article being written by a, a, a writer from Canada, actually, and, and she titled her article, uh, Conscientious Objectors, Canaries in the Ethical Mine Shaft, okay. which tends to fit just what we're talking about there is this uh, decay of ethics. In your observations, what do you think the driving force is behind this ethical decay? What is pushing it forward? Mm. An ideology which can only come out of hell. Mm. 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 An ideology which is utilitarian. Yes. An ideology which cannot survive mm. or allow humanity to survive. Survive, yes. I, I'm very aware of political correctness, but I'm going to raise it anyway. Um, there seems to be a perspective uh, that I detect, and, and in our earlier conversation you referred to it, is that much of the driving it comes actually from feminism in its various forms. And uh, not, not, I'm not expressing opposition to feminism per se, but in its various forms. How do you see that as integrating I'm this? Not this is a very much of women woman's problem, this isn't it, it's of abortion? No, it isn't. Hmm. Because it takes a man to, and a woman to create a baby. Yes, uh, understood. I, I okay. expressed that badly. Okay. No, Norm, <laughs> hold on. We're buying mm. their argument. Yes. Damn it. No, I'm not mm. buying their argument. Mm. Mm. It isn't a woman's problem. We both made love mm. and we mm. both conceived the baby. Mm. It's mm. not a woman's problem. Mm. When there is a new creation in her womb, yes, yes it is her body. She is the host, mm. but the child has a separate body. Mm. A child has his own or her own heartbeat, organs, everything. Yeah. And no, she didn't do, the woman did not create this baby alone. No matter how brilliant she is, mm. she can't. It needs a male. So it is both a male and a female problem. As I've said somewhere else, and I don't remember where I said, Adam is as absent today as he was in the garden. Mm. And this is part of the problem. Adam has walked away from supporting Eve. I mm. mean, genuinely supporting Eve. And mm. by that, you know, I mean male and female. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is, this is the biggest part of the problem. That, and, and I remember reading one of the studies of Professor Philip Nye from Canada. And he said that in his findings, if a woman feels supported by her partner, mm. she won't abort. Mm. It's the partner who walks away, whether yes. husband, boyfriend, or who even family. When the woman feels unsupported, she will abort. Yes. But it's not her pregnancy. No. It's their, it's interesting when we have a, pregnant couple who are happily pregnant it's our baby isn't it that's right when it's not a happy pregnancy it's her pregnancy yes no i refuse that mm. Mm. yes that's that's an interesting point and i i'm just about to raise an issue which we'll need to talk about after the break i suggest but this also goes to uh the d dominion, dominion, the dimin diminution. diminution, that's Thank the you. word. Thank you so much. Diminution of the male role, which is actually the male's response 
to an aggressive feminist movement over the past 10 to 15 years. So men have actually lost their place mm -hmm. in, in a large to a large extent. And that may in fact be part of the reason for the degeneration of the ethical principles in relation to, uh, to uh, abortion. But we'll pick that up after the break because we could go a long way with that. Okay, very okay. long, very <laughs> long. Yes, indeed. We'll go to a break. We'll be back soon. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity. And I'm speaking with Anne Lastman, who's a post-abortion grief counsellor. We, before we went to break, we were sort of starting to get into an interesting concept of the fact that that part of uh, a male disassociation with his involvement with the child, his involvement with abortion, may well be uh, attributable to the fact that he has been and this is an observation, fairly broadly held observation, that men have actually lost a lot of their sense of place. And so that they'll surrender to the fact that the child is part, is the woman's responsibility. It's her body, it's her this, it's her that. Where did that start from? Well, the theory is that that started from the aggressive early feminist movement uh, in the sense that men were, were reduced in their sense of value and worth. This is only a theory, but that's why I was going to ask you whether you see that as being the case. Do you, do you get feedback from your clients to indicate uh, the male's perspective, the male's role in, in, in the choice to abort? From the females, mostly, it mm -hmm. was to placate a boyfriend, a husband, mm -hmm. or someone important. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. From the males, when I have, because I've also had male clients mm -hmm. who are devastated mm. because the woman has said, it's my body, I'll do with it what I want. Yes. But I asked you, I said to you, when do you think it started? It started as far as I can go back. In fact, I had this discussion only this past week. I think it began, the seed was planted in 1930 and right. began in the 60s, mm -hmm. solidly, mm -hmm. with the pill culture, contraceptive oh, okay. culture. Yeah. Yep. When the woman said, I will now do with my body as I want. Mm -hmm. I will be as in control mm -hmm. of my body. I shall go and have as much sex as I want mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm sorry, but the male enjoyed that bit. Because... I can't believe that. No, absolutely. <laughs> you can't. No. I mean, here he can have as much sex yes. as he wants without there being any responsibility. Any consequences. Yeah. Consequences mm. to... Mm. Before that, if he got someone pregnant, he'd have to... Uh, her dad mm. would shoot him. Mm, that's right. Yeah, the old days. But after, mm. after that... He didn't have to worry anymore. And slowly, what has happened is that he's withdrawn mm. from the child that he conceives. Yes. Because he's, he's now not needed. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, concept. Uh, it, and I, I'm minded of something that I read recently in preparing for these interviews is the fact that even uh, there are quite a large percentage uh, of, of abortions actually arise from people who have been using contraceptives, in fact sometimes two levels of contraceptives, so that the contraception itself uh, is oftentimes not, a, not a, a good guarantee. But it's also a contraception itself and even the morning after pills are abortifacients. So yes, that's a different, that's, another, that's a different another level of uh, chemical abortions. Yeah. Yes. We've got a new level of abortion. Does yeah. that mean that um, mm. uh, a four-week baby mm. is not a baby? No, no. So we've no. got a different, again, a new level. Yes, the, 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 the chemical abortions uh, raise some very serious ethical issues. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now, recently we read here that the RU486 yes. is uh, OTC, 
over the counter. That's right. Without prescription. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We know that overseas and in America and in Europe, there's been deaths from RU486. Yes. What do we need? More deaths here mm. before mm. some action will be taken. Because mm. a 15-year-old mm. mm. um, who isn't responsible enough to fix her own bed. Mm. Yes. And really, they shouldn't be because they're mm. only 15. That's right. Does something that she feels afraid, mm. she has, she's intimate mm. with her boyfriend, Mm. And then takes IU four eight six when she's six weeks pregnant. What's that? Might, what might that do to her? Well, lots of horrible things. But the thing, the thing which arises there, and this is a question I'd like to ask you because of your involvement, mm -hmm. uh, a fifteen year old girl who becomes pregnant. Uh, what are the counselling services available to her? How do you service these young people? How do you service women who have come to the conclusion that abortion is the only answer? What would you see as being, A, the existing process, and what would be the ideal process? Well, there, there's, at the moment, there exists pregnancy centres mm -hmm. that can help them mm -hmm. find uh, this pregnancy support services right. all over the place. Mm -hmm. But if these, this law going through in Tasmania mm -hmm. comes about and is picked up here in Victoria, there won't be any. No. No, there won't be allowed to be. Hmm. Yes, it, it, it's pretty horrific, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. It, it, it's it, worse it, than the Victorian, this Victorian law. Yes, yes. Yes, it, it's, uh, it, it places... I, I keep coming back to the word ethics and, and, mm -hmm. and, and we could work, talk for hours about what it's, that There is means. the death of ethics in yeah. our society. Now, yeah. we are the, at the end of, an, of a time. Mm -hmm. But... We haven't found a way to get into a new time yet. Interesting. Yeah, the the age of Aquarius or something. That I don't know about. what age it is, <laughs> but yes. we are we have ended a, an era. Yeah. Mm. But we have nothing that will lead us, except death, into the next era. Mm. And John Paul's John Paul II's terms culture of death. Yes. Is well and thriving mm. because we, euthanasia is only just around the corner somewhere. Culture of death. That culture of death implies the end of time. And we're out of time. Oh. It's so. Oh, <laughs> darn it. No, you're I another, was enjoying you're it. You're make another point. Uh, thank you so much, Anne. You're much welcome. Much appreciated. And we've covered some, some very interesting yeah. ground. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Shanti Allahu.